We are riding a dragon! Oh yeah, baby. Alright. Our next destination is Wals, Wals Castle specifically. There is no useful resources on the village itself, so we're going to gloss over that. Do know that the danger rate doesn't advance as I am flying around to hear you. This is a rule that applies for any airborne vehicle. The danger rate doesn't advance, so nothing happens to the step manip as long as you are flying on something. However, as soon as you land, the danger rate advances normally, so make sure that you land in front of Wals Castle. So, we just gotta head here to have a nice, friendly conversation with King Walls. Unfortunately, we will have to deal with the poison screen effect until after Liquid Flame, so... <laughs> uh, you'll get used to it. Now, uh, we need to perform a short menu somewhere before the Walls Tower. I like doing it after the meteor crashes just to have the dramatic music in the background. Uh, we need to set up uh, thieves on the party. Or cursor should be over Gallop. Okay. White thieves. We're going to steal some items in Walls Tower, so the more the merrier. But we need at least one party member who is consistently slower than thieves to get a fail-safe method of running away from uh, the encounter that we're going to steal from. So three thieves, lend us a blue mage. And that will be good enough. Uh, as a backup, you can go back here on Walls Castle and into the storage unit to collect some goodies. Just some money and uh, a Phoenix Zone, a nice safety net. This used to be part of the route, but we find the money through other resources. And uh, this is a detour, nonetheless. Okay. The only thing we have to do here, however, is just get the sequence trigger so we can access Walls Tower. And uh, when going back to the Hear You, you need to perform a half step. Uh, notice that as I walk into the Hear You, then I can press A in order to write it, but you can hold the A button before reaching the Hear You, and this uh, doesn't advance uh, uh, the danger rate, it counts as a half step. So, buffering inputs strikes once again, it is an important tool for the SNES version of the game. And uh, we gotta land uh, somewhere next to the Walls Tower, and we can access the dungeon and get a start here. Uh, so, if you don't talk with King Walls and have the entire meteor sequence uh, trigger, then a guard is going to block the way into Walls Tower, and you will not be able to do anything here. So, that's a necessary part of uh, accessing this area. Uh, now, on the second floor here, we're going to get our encounter, but first, we're going to get uh, six steps. So, as you enter this floor, go to the left or right, you can mirror my movements, I guess. And um, go back, and we're going to get an encounter on, next to this one. So, our target for stealing are uh, ice soldiers. It's because they have a meteor sword as a common steal, and uh, we're going to use that to buff uh, the power of Goblin Punch, and it is by far the strongest weapon we can acquire at this point. Um, under the step manipulation, you only have one chance, and one chance only, to steal the Mitri Swords on this encounter. We cannot get more formations after this. So you get uh, three shots at stealing from them, and uh, at a 40% success rate. So your chances are not great, but I haven't had a run where the guys have failed me to give me the steal. But yeah, uh, as I mentioned, you want to steal with all the thieves, and when you reach uh, Lenny's turn, you need to flee, because these guys will murder you. You cannot stick for longer than one round of combat. I got a preemptive here, which means that I can get a couple of attempts at stealing, but when... let's just see what happens. So, Faris is going to get her turn first, she's going to steal, and uh, here you can verify whether Faris steals or not, which I got a meter sword immediately, which is kind of funny. But I want to show off what happens if uh, for the next uh, two thieves. For Bars and Galuf, you need to launch the, the steals immediately. You cannot wait on Galuf's turn to see if uh, Bars uh, successfully steals an item, because that will allow the enemies to advance their ATVs, and uh, that is bad. <laughs> they will get a chance at sniping you and uh, destroying your party. And this happened to me in a marathon one time, and I almost lost the run because of it, so I got extremely paranoid about this. So. Faris, you can wait for her to steal, but Bars and Galuf need to target their soldiers immediately uh, so you can sit tight on Lenny's turn and uh, have her run away when uh, given the opportunity. But yeah, let me see if I can get, <laughs> if I can get another Metrosaur. I was just going to emulate if I didn't get the steals, but I got two Metrosaurs, which means that I can show off all the Galore strats. So, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna take that. Please, don't mind if I do, alright. You only need one Mithril Sword, 
If you have one meter sword, you can get the fastest strat possible. If you don't get any meter swords, you have a backup. It is a slower, but it is possible to continue with a speed run with none of them. Uh, two meter swords is overkill. I honestly would just run away if you get the first one and just be done with that. Because the two meter sword stat is not as fast as. Well, it's not that much faster than the one meter sword stat, so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, if you are self stamina, you can just get encounters as you want and uh, get all the meter swords to your heart discontent and keep going. So, after the battle, we need four steps, so go hog this corner, uh, use the gap to get a couple tiles of movement and uh, progress through Walls Tower. Now, here we are going to make a clean shot to the sixth floor. So hug the corners there, rest in peace, King Walls. And on this floor we need 8 steps of uh, movement. And I couldn't figure out a consistent visual reference for this, so I just settled it with doing a walking cycle in front of the stairs, and that's enough uh, for the step manip. On this room we need 6 steps, so grab this corner, go to the right, and uh, keep following uh, the path uh, through this room. Also, try to take advantage of the corner tiles here, because uh, uh, that's a more consistent uh, method of uh, crossing the room because you gotta be careful about the bottom part of every room in Walls Tower in case you misstep. Now, on the 8th floor, uh, the well, when you move in front of a vine, it's going to automatically uh, force you to climb it. So there is an event time in front of them, but you don't have to worry about misstepping unless you do something really awkward like going to the side of it and approach it this way, which is not realistically going to happen, but just uh, exercise caution. Go to the right, go up and uh, grab uh, the vine. And on the last floor of Walls Tower we need to get uh, this uh, chest with an either for some extra steps and the money that sells for for later. Okay, and we have reached the Water Crystal Shrine. So there are three strats for Galuria, as I mentioned earlier. We got the 1 meter sword strat, ideally the no meter sword strat and the two meter sword strats. So I'm going to showcase every strat and, and uh, tell you the nuances of uh, each of them. Okay, as for Galure, we need... Uh, okay. Alright, we gotta set up a blue mage to uh, make use of that meter sword we used to uh, obtain. So, burst of blue mage, optimize. Also, whenever uh, you gain an ability for one of your characters, now you get automatically bullet on this menu where you get to select uh, you, uh, an ability after selecting your job class, so you just cancel out of this. Uh, but yeah, optimize Bards to equip that Mithril Sword. And uh, next, uh, Faris is going to guard tank for us in the battle, so she becomes a knight, because she has the highest agility um, and the most HP out of anybody. So for this one, you want to manually equip a Mithril, the Mithril Helm we got on the Magisa cutscene. If you optimize, you are going to equip the Bronze Mail, which we do not want, because it gives us a lot of equipment weight. Uh, right now, Faris is only a point of agility faster than Lena, and uh, if she has uh, 8 equipment weight or more, then that's going to drag down, drag her down the turn sequence and make her a speed tie with Lena. But we want Faris to always go first uh, to guarantee that we select the guard uh, as soon as the battle starts. So, Mitri Helmet still gives us enough defense, but it doesn't have this peculiarity of uh, forcing us uh, in to a speed tie with Lena and mess up the turn sequence. So, uh, after that, we need to potion uh, Faris to get her max HP. This is where all these potions we've been collecting here and there finally come into play. If you don't have enough potions, you can turn somebody into a white mage, I guess, uh, Galuf, and use the cure spell. We do have that available. So, that's there as a backup. But we can uh, go battle Galura. I've been hyping up this battle since we collected the Wind Crystal uh, job classes, so. It's going to be a treat. Alright. The way Galura works is that he only uses physical attacks whenever he gets an action, but when he falls below 800 HP, he is going to start countering any damage you do. No matter how big or small, he is always going to fight once and then have an extra chance of doing uh, another action, which is a one-third chance of doing nothing, a one-third chance of doing a physical attack, and a one-third chance of inflicting the sap status, or HP leak. Uh, sap progressively lowers your HP, and it wears off eventually, but in the context of a speedrun, it means that you need to heal up a Faris with a potion or something. We don't really have time for that, though. But uh, the way the battle is routed, you don't have to worry about uh, 
uh, sap killing fairies. Um, if you don't hesitate with your inputs. So uh, because Galura only attacks with physical attacks, that means that uh, Faris will always cover whatever Galura launches at you. So you are protected. And uh, as long as you do your inputs quickly, you will be fine. Also notice that everybody's poisoned, so we are on a timer. After two rounds of combat, then the actual poison status is going to tick and kill people. So you cannot take longer than two rounds to kill Galura. So uh, we're going to queue up a defense action to get rid of Call of his turn. He's not doing anything for us here. Okay, he's pretty much staying as a thief so that we can run around the, the uh, water shrine room as uh, the crystal shatters and we need to collect the shards. A spoiler alert, the water crystal shards. Anyway, uh, after Call of his turn, Faris should always come up because of how we carefully equip the Dimitri helmet to guarantee our agility. And that's our first hit. So here you press left and guard. Now, Faris is completely invulnerable to anything Galura can launch, and then there is Lena's turn. So for Lena, uh, as a, my last reminder on the subject, if uh, Lena had to attack uh, during Magisa, she will have the knife equipped, so you gotta ensure that she has the broadsword instead. Even if you have another meter sword, you want a broadsword, um, because it's next to the damage range we need for the battle. So please, don't forget the broadsword, and uh, we can uh, start damaging Galura. So, uh, Len is going to have Goblin Punch on Memory Cursor because she still ha carried that over from all the way uh, from Siren. So you can use uh, select Goblin Punch quickly here. And then is Bars Storm. So we're going to select Goblin Punch as uh, Lena casts the spell. And uh, deals some immense damage thanks to the Meteor Swords we just stole. So. Uh, Here's the fierce barrage of counters, no HP leak, which means that the battle is guaranteed. But, like I said, if their HP leak happens, you will be fine, as long as you are quick. Um, battle speed fight is not going to save you here, because it's just going to make HP leak last longer. <laughs> so... Remember everything you've learned about buffering inputs. On the second round of combat, you want Lena to defend, because uh, uh, Bars can snipe Galora from this range of health, and Lena is damaged she wouldn't would only add extra attack animations and more Galura counters, so it's a waste of time. You you only want to defend that. So yeah, you just uh, finish him off with Bards and... Uh, we have destroyed Galura. Thanks to the setup we've been uh, preparing since <laughs> the first hour of the run, I want to say. Uh, then we got a high potion drop. So that's the first strat. Now I'm going to show off what happens if you don't have any Meteor Swords on inventory. Uh, if that is the case, then... Uh, Bards is going to set up a broadsword instead of the meteor swords that wouldn't be available, and then you want to set Galuf as a blue mage as well so that he can contribute on the battle. So on Optimus, he's going to set up the dagger and uh, the same setup for Paris, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now for this battle, it's uh, guard immediately and then select goblin punch and just spam six goblin punches, and that will be enough to kill Galura. The peculiarity with this strategy is that it's going to look like uh, Galura is going to kill to kill you if uh, you use if he casts uh, Rush and uh, starts uh, sapping uh, Faris's HP away. But if you just hold A for the second round, um, then uh, Galura will die and. Uh, Faris should hang on with at least 11 HP or something like that, so don't worry about her dying, don't panic and cast a potion, that will actually kill you because uh, the, po the poison uh, will start ticking on your other party members and then they will die because of the poison, so you don't have time to heal anyway, so don't worry about uh, um, Faris' survival, just attack, kill Galura, destroy, destroy, destroy. As for the last setup, you get the quote unquote is his battle with this. Uh, you also want to set up Galuf as a blue mage, optimize. Uh, well, with the meters, the other spare meter sword. And this style is pretty nice because you can just kill Galora in the first round of combat. Now the problem is that the time you save off of this style from the fight from the faster battle by uh, Killing him around earlier is lost on the extra menu because you have to set up Galuf as a blue mage, and then after the battle we need to set up a thief so we can collect the, the crystal shards around the room. So it turns out that this really does nothing. 
uh, it ends up catching up a truth menu in any way, but if it's available and you think you can menu quickly enough, uh, you can save uh, a tiny bit of time with Astra. But yeah, if you do that, you're gonna set up a thief to run around here, so I'm just going to do the previous setup. And uh, I guess I'll do a quick uh, overview of, of the Water Crystal Job classes. And this set is not as useful as the Wind Crystal Job as well, they have their part, they play their part. So, uh, Time Mage, we don't use it for the Dimension Magic, but rather for the raw stats, because uh, it has higher agility than... Uh, Black Mages, and uh, even though it has a lower magic power stat, it wouldn't cast uh, as a strong raw damage when breaking if you use a uh, Time Mage. Uh, Lena has an uh, innately higher magic stat, so she can make up uh, for the lacking magic power through her innate stats and uh, deal the full raw damage of a Black Mage as a Time Mage, and we can benefit from the extra agility. So we only use this for the raw stats at uh, one point. Next up is Mystic Knight. Uh, this is useful to do Tundaga Spellblade and kill Machine Heads on the Pyramid of Moor, but we don't detour for more on this route, so you don't have that backup. They can also cast a Sleep Spellblade to put Atomos to sleep, but we don't use that either, so... It, it, I don't know. <laughs> we have better things to do with our time. Um, Summoner... This thing is slower than Black Mages and has some higher magic power, but it doesn't affect multipliers at all, so we never wind up using Summoner. And coming up here is a Red Mage, which amusingly is the most useful job class out of this set. Uh, so, Red Mage is considerably weaker on the magic power department, but it has a lot more agility. So this uh, can aid us at speeding a couple of key bosses and enemies, uh, and uh, it's just going to come in handy. As well for the fact that they can cast uh, Cure and Life, so sometimes it's easier to access Red Mage over White Mage, so... It's, it's, it's a fair amount of use. And then we have uh, Berserkers. Obviously, we're going to Quadserker Sandworm. Hope you are looking forward to it. <laughs> and uh, then there is a long song with Mind, Job Crystal, you, you can ground World 3. As a fun fact, if you use Wall Hacks to cross uh, these uh, stairs, uh, the game will crash. <laughs> You're just not supposed to interact with that crystal at all. Um, uh, yeah, we can use Lita behind. It would be a hassle to go grab on World 3, so Mime just dies here alongside Walls Tower. Speaking of that, in Silver Tongue. Alright. And after finishing Walls Tower, we want to be at 138 tall steps. <laughs> 